majesty of his holiness. He's a holy God. He's a holy God. He's a holy God. He's indescribable, uncontainable. He's awesome. Just worship him this morning. To the depths of the sea, creations revealing your majesty from the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring. creature unique in the song that it sings all exclaiming indescribable uncontainable you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name you are you are amazing God. He's our all in all. He knows you by name. He calls you by your name. I appreciate God this morning. He has no equal. He has no match. No one compares unto our God. He is perfect in all his ways. Can you just appreciate your God this morning? He 
this our amazing God. Go ahead and let him hear your voice. Let him see your heart of gratitude unto him. Appreciate him this morning. You are alive and well. Your legs can carry your body. Your eyes can see. Your mouth can speak and you can eat. Can you just say, Lord, I thank you. Just thank the Lord over your family, over your spouse, over your children, over your parents. Can you say, Lord, I thank you. That the Lord has shut your door against every form of bad news. Oh, the Lord is not allowing any emergency call to come to you. Can you say, Lord, I thank you. The Bible says God remembered Abraham and delivered Lot. As the Lord is remembering you, is delivering all your loved ones from different dangers. As the Lord is preserving you, is preserving your loved ones. Can you say, Lord, I thank you this morning. Don't take anything for granted. Don't take anything for granted. It is not because you, you are rich. It's not because you are more beautiful than others. It's not because you are more handsome than others. All because of his grace. All because of his mercy. His word says, because of his grace, because of his mercy, we are not consumed. You are not being consumed this morning because of his mercy. Because of his kindness. Because of his faithfulness. Because our God is dependable. Magnify him this morning. For the fact that he has given you life. Not just ordinary life. He has, keeping, he has kept you in good health. He's keeping you in good health. You are staying fresh and green. Can you say, Lord, I thank you. The glory of the Lord is all over you. The beauty of the Lord is all over you. Can you thank him this morning? Appreciate him this morning. He provides for you. He watches over you in all your ways. He does not allow any evil to befall you. You travel within Lagos, outside Lagos, outside Nigeria, the Lord keeps you. Can you say, Lord, I thank you. In Imbavisa, O Rere, beautiful to Ayemi, Egeruwa, Okuma, Toko, Yere, Esheo, Jesus. As you have just said, just to thank him this morning. You cannot thank him enough. You cannot thank him enough for all that he's doing. Every single minute, the Lord does something in your life for you. That scripture says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Do not forget all his benefits. Do not forget all his benefits this morning. Do not forget all his benefits this morning. He forgives your sin. He heals all your diseases. He renews your, your youth like that of eagle. Oh, he delivers you from destruction. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, it is your holy. I The word of God says, blessed and fortunate and happy and spiritually prosperous. In that state, 
in which the born again child of God enjoys life, enjoys his favor and salvation, are those hunger and thirst for righteousness, uprightness, and right standing with God, for they shall be completely satisfied. There is no any other thing that can bring satisfaction in life. Money cannot bring satisfaction. The more you have, the more you want. When you buy anything right now that you are saying to yourself that this is the latest, tomorrow you see another one, you still want to get it. If you build a house that you are saying to yourself, this is the best house, as you go out, you see a better one. Nothing else in life brings satisfaction apart from to have right standing with the Lord, to be hunger and thirst after righteousness. You are going to pray that, Lord, grant me insatiable hunger after righteousness. Grant me a thirst after righteousness throughout this year, O oh God, that I will strive and be longing, O oh God, to always be, to always have right standing with you throughout this year. Can you make that your prayer? That is the only thing that brings satisfaction. The word of God says those who are in such situation shall be fully, shall be completely satisfied. That is the only thing that brings satisfaction. That is the only thing that brings blessing. That is the only thing that makes a person to be fortunate, to be happy, and to be spiritually prosperous. Say, Lord, fill my heart with hunger for you, for you throughout this year, that I will seek, I will pursue your kingdom and its righteousness. In the name of Jesus, I will pursue righteousness, I will pursue holiness throughout this year in the name of Jesus. Please, can you make that your prayer? Make it your prayer. You remember, Jesus Christ said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and every other thing shall be given unto you. As you follow this, every other thing will fall in place. That is the only thing that can bring you satisfaction. There is no any other thing in this world. Even relationship cannot give you satisfaction. Relationship with men cannot give you satisfaction. Say, Lord, help me this year, O oh God, to always be hunger and thirst after your word, after righteousness, after uprightness, after right standing with you in the name of Jesus through our this year, that you will not stray away from the path of righteousness, that you will not stray away from the path of holiness in the name of Jesus. Do we have people that are hungry after righteousness this morning? Can they pray? To the Lord, that the Lord will cause them to always be hungry after righteousness in the name of Jesus. Please, I want you to take this just single prayer point. I want you to take it more seriously. That is the only thing that can make you stay at peace. That is the only thing that can make your soul to be at rest. That is what will not allow you to be running here and there, to join in the rat race that many people are running after. It is only to have a right standing with the Lord. It is only righteousness. It is only uprightness that can bring satisfaction. He says, for they shall be completely satisfied. I want you to join that prayer that, Lord, throughout this year, nothing shall take your place in my heart. Nothing, O oh God, shall take your place in my heart. In the name of Jesus, you will remain the number one in my heart. In the mighty name of Jesus, say to the Lord, throughout this year, Lord, nothing in this world shall take your place. In my heart, I will continue to love you. 
you will continue to be the number one in my heart in the name of Jesus. Please, can you make that your heart cry? Can you make that your heart cry? That God will remain the number one in your life. He will remain the number one in your heart. Things of this world will not take the place of God in your heart. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Is there anything that bothers you this morning? Can you present it to the Lord? The Lord is here to answer you. That's long-standing issue. Present it to the Lord. His power is in the house. Whatever that thing may be. Is there any need that you want the Lord to meet? Is it sickness? Present it to the Lord. The power of the Lord is in the house. If it has to do with job, tell the Lord to remember you. If it has to do with the fruit of the womb, please present it to the Lord. Whatever the issue may be, the Lord who loves you will answer you. Thank you, Almighty Father. We worship and we adore you. Because you said in your word, you have not asked us to worship you in vain. Therefore, our coming this morning will not be in vain. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. We never came through the life of his love until all of his love we lay for the favor he shows for the joy he bestows and for them who will trust and obey trust and obey for the joy disciple is when the person surrender the control of his life to the master that is to the shepherd to listen to his voice and to follow him wherever he leads, wherever he directs and that is what we have in that stanza for since where he sends we will go whatever he says we will do Never to fear, only to trust and obey. Uh, we'll be bringing an instrumental music. Uh, Shepherd of my soul.
down to 11, the next 20 minutes were out. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 to 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 to 11. Now about spiritual gift, brothers, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that when you were pagans somehow or others, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I told you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus because, and no one says Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of walking, but the same God, who, walk, who walks all of them in all men. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom. To another, the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gift of healing by the same Spirit. To another, miraculous power. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between Spirit. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these were the workings of one were the workings of one and the same spirit. And he gives them to each one as he has determined. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in our life in Jesus' name. This morning the discipleship emphasis is discipleship and the discovery of spiritual gift. There are two major things in uh, uh, this uh, emphasis today that we want to emphasize. The issue of discipleship and also the issue of spiritual uh, the spiritual gifts uh, of recent the church felt is very important that every member of the church will locate themselves in the area of their gifting so that they can function and can serve well in the calling that God Almighty wants them to the introduction there was a story of a little girl called Judy she was given one small but very important part in the children's Christmas party she was to hold up the word star at the appropriate time. When it seemed pretty simple, child-proof, if, if you will, the letters were cut out and attached to a stick. Judy's assignment was to raise the stick with the letter star on it. When the time came, the little girl, right on cue, held the stick high. The audience roared with laughter. At first, the proud mother thought the congregation was appreciating her, her cute daughter. Then she realized why they were really laughing. You see, no one had told the little girl that there was a right way and a wrong way to hold a stick. Consequently, when she raised the stick, the sign was backward. Instead of saying star, the sign said rats. Many are like this little girl, either as a result of assumption or negligence or ignorance, we have all made costly mistakes in life because there's no one to tell us that there's a right way and there's a wrong way to hold a stick. Beloved, the issue of discipleship is very important, very core to our life. It is the avenue that God provides for us. It's an avenue that God provides a guide. God provides the instructions that will help us to know how to hold the stick and how not to hold the, the stick. For that, to, for that not to happen in, 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 in our life, Jesus Christ, while he was on earth, he taught you know, the large crowd about the kingdom of God. But intentional leadership development, he left to a small group. Why was it that Jesus Christ used the 12 groups, the, the 12 disciples as a model 
that he actually used in order to raise men who eventually were the ones who brought the gospel to you and I today is very, very important. In the passage of Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 to 20, Jesus stated clearly the responsibility of the church. This is go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you. This divine statement has four, four elements in them. The first one is to go. The second is to make disciples. The third one is to baptize. The fourth is to teach. Of the four elements, only one is imperative, and that is the verb of command, while the other three are participle. The command there is what? Go make disciples. So in Jesus' ministry, whenever he called any one of them, the instruction is, come, I will make you. So discipleship is a process that God takes us through to make us into who he wants us to be. So this, this is the sole responsibility of the church. And everything the church does and the assessment of his performance will be determined by this overriding goal. It is not uh, without significance that the word discipleship occurred in the Bible 269 times. It's not, it's not a play. When, when in the scriptures you begin to see a word repeating itself over and over again, that is the emphasis. That God is saying, this is my heart. This is what I'm, I'm, I, I desire for you. And so we'll see this in, in the scripture. So who then is a disciple? And what do we mean by discipleship? These are two major questions that we need to answer you know, this morning. Discipleship is, or disciple is a person who is an emulator, a zealous admirer, an ardent follower of Jesus Christ. So when we talk about disciple, a disciple is a person who is an emulator, a zealous admirer, and an ardent follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you look at each of these verbs, you can ask yourself, are you an emulator of Jesus Christ? Are you a zealous admirer of Jesus Christ? Are you an ardent follower of Jesus Christ? Many people today are serving or are following Christ, not on the terms of Christ, but on their own terms. If you are following Christ based on your own terms, you are not a disciple yet. A disciple has no will, it is the will of the Father. A disciple has no plan, it is the plan of the Father. A disciple obey even when it's difficult, when it is hard. A disciple will yield and submit is what is, what is an ardent follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. So which one are you? Where are you placing yourself this morning? That is the issue that God is placing before us this morning. So discipleship, secondly, discipleship is a process where the disciple's character is being transformed and made complete in Christ so that he can become a competent or competent for ministry. So three things. The issue of our character, when we talk about discipleship, when this person who, who is an ardent admirer of Christ comes, one of the things that God begins to work upon is your character. We learned in, in experiencing God that God will not give an assignment to a man whose character does not match the assignment. And so God deals with our character. Every one of us, as we were born into this world, we came with a flawed character. Every one of us, there is a defect in our character. So in the place of discipleship, God begins to work upon our character in order for that character to be shaped and reshapen so that we, our character can match the assignment that God Almighty has called us into. The completeness in Christ that every day as we go through the various disciplines of discipleship, as we go through, God is making us complete in Him. God is making us complete in Him. That is why John will say that it has not yet appeared who we shall be. For when we see Him, we shall be like Him. So in the process of discipleship, God is making us complete in Him. When you follow the process, when you follow the steps, when you, when you adhere to the calling, when you adhere to the word that God is revealing to you, every day God is making you complete in Him. There are so many believers today, they have given their life to Christ 20 years ago, 30 years ago, but they are not yet complete. Why? Because they, are not, they have not yielded into the place of discipleship where God works upon their life. The third part of discipleship is the competency for ministry. 
that when Jesus Christ took the 12 disciples and walked them through the process, eventually he equipped them and made them competent for ministry. That is why in the book of Acts, when the, when the people saw them, the Bible makes us to understand that they described them as unlearned men. <laughs> These were unschooled, unlearned men, unknown men, but yet because God has made them competent for ministry, Paul, uh, Peter came out, the first message he gave, 3,000 souls gave their life to Christ. Competency for ministry. So every one of us, we need the process that discipleship takes us through is to make, to work upon our character, make us complete in him and to work upon our competency for ministry. Up till today, you have been in church, you have given your life to Christ, we see you every Sunday, but you are not competent in ministry to do anything. And that's, that's why God is saying, no, it must change this year. You need to come down and understand what God wants you to understand. Now, discipleship is not discipleship is a process. It is not a program. Discipleship is a small group. Discipleship is a relationship. Discipleship is flexible. Discipleship is an accountability relationship. In in discipleship we we account for our life. The discipler who sits over you, who walks you through the process, is accountable for you, you are accountable for him. So in discipleship, you have accountability in, in life. Somebody is watching over you. Somebody is asking you questions. How is this? How is this going? Some people feel too big. Some people feel too, too um, full of themselves. How can I keep myself under this person? But you see, in discipleship, you are broken. In discipleship, you are humbled. That's why people who go through the process of discipleship, they will never remain the same again because they need they learn humility. That's why God Almighty is calling upon us today to look at this matter seriously. So the whole process of discipleship takes us through major things, responsibility, relationship, and reproducing yourself. Reproducing yourself, your own kind. People will begin to ask, who is this person? How is this person? making out his life and living out his life uh, as he goes. Now, why is discipleship necessary? This is the high point of this aspect of the emphasis today. Why is it necessary? In the first part, I said that it is necessary because it is the intentional effort to grow you spiritually. It is an intentional effort to grow you in, in spiritually. That's why Jesus Christ, you know, when there were some things that he would say to the disciples that he would, you would never hear him tell the crowd. There are some secret things that Jesus would tell the, the disciples that are never revealed to the crowd. The crowd will come. They will hear the gospel. They will hear that they need to be saved. They will hear that they need to yield their heart and live the life, live, you know, stop the sins in their life and yield themselves totally to God. But the secret things that God begins to reveal to help the people to grow is revealed in the place of discipleship. So it is an intentional effort to grow you. And that's why God has made available this platform. Why you need to yield yourself. Why you need to connect yourself with this matter of discipleship. Yes, there are other avenues for you to grow. But in discipleship, there's a process that God runs you through. There's a guide who guides you through that that process and through that process your life is being shaped and you are being given the, the necessary tool in order to be who God actually wants you to be secondly I said why is the subject necessary? it is the avenue whereby God moves you from just engaging in church to become a product of the church there's a difference be, between being just uh, engaged with the church there's so many who are engaged with the church you are engaged with the church. You come to church service. You come to Sunday school. You do one thing or the other in church. People see you. You have your name in the register. You are engaged with the church. We thank you that you are engaged. We thank God that you are engaged with the church. But when you have not come into the process of discipleship, you are not yet a product of the church. Now, what is a product of the church? If you bring a bottle of Coke, and there's nothing inside the bottle, will you buy that bottle? When you are buying Coke, you are not buying the bottle, you are buying the content. That's what discipleship is. That 
a true disciple, you will become a product of the church. A product of the church. That all over the world, when people taste you, when people experience you, they will know that they have experienced something. That's why when Jesus walked upon the disciples, the container, their body frame was nothing to write home about. When maybe you see somebody like Peter, a rugged fisherman, his hands and his look does not attract anybody, but Peter carried something. There's a content. There's a product inside. When Peter began to speak, people listened because something has happened in his life. Are you a product? Please ask somebody by your side. Are you a product of the church? Please become a product of the church. Now, a product of the church, what they grow steadily. Product of the church, they grow steadily. They grow steadily. It's a process. They grow steadily. Are you growing steadily? Are you growing consistently? That's the call that God is making to you this morning. The product of the church, they stand solidly. You are not, you are not like, like the chaff that is blowing or that is blown away. At any given time. No, you are steady. So in discipleship, when you become a product of the church, you grow steadily, you stand solidly, and you are selflessly proclaiming Christ. You are selflessly proclaiming Christ. Nobody had to tell you that, oh, uh, go and minister to this person. Go and, you know, evangelize. Because you understand the process that you have been taken through, it becomes a selfless thing. That you have to do. Lastly, it is an avenue where the Lord makes you to become what you were meant to be. So that you can do what you are meant to do. That's connecting it with the issue of our spiritual gift. Every one of us, through the process of discipleship, God makes us into what we are meant to be. And when we are so done then we become we begin to understand what is it that i was meant to do in the world why is it that i am here why is it that god made me a member of new Esther baptist church why am I, I why was i added to this body beloved every one of us that god has made a member of a, of the body of christ in new Esther baptist church you are not here by mistake it is a design of God. You, you carry something that needs to be used in this body in order to edify the body of Christ. So that links us to the issue of discovering our spiritual gifts. Because when we understand what we were meant to be, then we can understand what we were meant to do in life. And that's where the issue of our spiritual gifts begins to come in. There are so many things... Uh, that we are all meant to, to be in the vineyard. That is why every disciple has been given spiritual gifts. But as Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1, he said, But about spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. Many today do not know and cannot do what they were meant to do on earth because they are ignorant. Paul deliberately used that word, ignorant. You know, if you are in a conversation with somebody and somebody used the word ignorant, I'm sure somehow you'll be offended. So Paul deliberately offended, you know, the people <laughs> in Corinth. He said, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant, to be uninformed. Another word for ignorant is uninformed. So you have been in church, you have a Bible, you do so many things, but you are ignorant. You are uninformed about the makings of God for your life. Of the things that God has deposited in you in order for you to be and to do what you were meant to do. I pray that on the last day we will not get to heaven and say, Oh God, I did all this and God will look at you. I have not sent you all these things that you did. I'm sure that there are some people that will be surprised in heaven. Because there's a, there's a carving out, there's a platform that God has created you to do to be and there's an assignment that god has created you to perform and to to deliver and if you do not deliver it and you transit to the other side eventually you will come but when you come he will ask you what have you done you have only done what maybe somebody else was supposed to do 
That's why the issue of discovering our spiritual gift is very, very important. So Paul deliberately used the word, please do not be uninformed. Please do not be ignorant. Beloved, can you imagine if Paul did not discover his own spiritual gift? Do you think we, we will have the historical information we have about Paul today? Do you know how it will be like if Peter, if other of the disciples did not discover the line that God Almighty has carved out for them? And so we need to understand. So what are spiritual gifts? Spiritual gifts are a set of special abilities that God gives to you to share his love and to serve him. Three things. They are special. Special to you. The gifts that you have, the spiritual gifts that you have are special to you. When you were coming to us, there's a spiritual gift that God has proposed to you as you gave your life to Christ. Those gifts begin to manifest. So the, speciali- the specialty about those gifts, about you, is that I may have similar things, or you may have, we may have similar things, but we have different way wherein we exhibit those spiritual gifts that we have. You know, so they are special abilities. The kinds of the measure of abilities that you have may not be the same that I have. So everybody, as a believer, one who has given his or her life to Christ, you have, you carry those special spiritual gifts and special ability. Secondly, the, 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 the special ability enables you to share his love. Enables you to share his love to people. Enables you to carry out the love of Christ wherever you are called to. And then the third aspect of it is that what the spiritual gifts are meant to is meant for service they are meant for service now believers are created to contribute to god's kingdom and make significant difference with our lives as we use our gift as we use our gift we're able to make significant contribution in the body of christ so a disciple who had discovered their spiritual gift become effective in service become people who will contribute meaningfully to the body of Christ now points to note in this particular passage is that what spiritual gifts are for believers that is why Paul began by using the word brothers in some other translation he used the word brethren so spiritual gifts are, be- are for believers those who are giving their heart and their life to the Lord Jesus Christ they have spiritual gifts there's a difference between your... Later on, I'm going to mention that, but spiritual gifts are for believers. If you are a child of God, if you have confessed the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, there's a spiritual gift that God has deposited in you to serve the body, to share the love of Christ in the body. So those spiritual gifts are there. Now, secondly, spiritual gifts are given to all believers. At least you have one. So there's nobody that will say, oh, well, uh, I don't think I have. No, everybody, every believer has a spiritual gift. The, 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 the struggle which we go through or which we have is some are ignorant. Some, they do not know. But in the process of discipleship, those gifts are discovered. Thirdly, spiritual gifts must be discovered, must be deployed, and must be developed. That's why the emphasis on discipleship is very, very important. In the place of discipleship, you discover it, you're able to deploy it, and you're able to develop it in order to bring forth the glory of God in the body of Christ. Spiritual gifts are for service, not for self-propagation. When you have spiritual gifts, when your spiritual gifts are revealed to you, they are for service, not for your own um, Propagation. Spiritual gift shows your ministry, while the fruit of the Spirit shows your maturity. Always, sometimes, some people conf- conflict uh, fruit of the Spirit with the, with the gift of the Spirit. They are different things. The fruit of the Spirit actually shows your maturity in, as you are maturing in Christ. And then the spiritual gift actually locates you in a particular ministry. And this year, as we know, that, you know, is our year of unusual breakthrough. That cannot happen if you have not located the ministry that God Almighty has called you to. So in conclusion, please remember that uh, uh, today that there are three components of a disciple's life. The character, your completeness in Christ, and then the competency for ministry. 
And the competency of ministry is what we have discussed last about the spiritual gift. If you have not discovered your spiritual gift, there's no how you can be competent for ministry. Anytime we hear the word of God, God places a demand on us. God places a demand upon us. And what is the demand that God is placing upon you this morning? That you need to be involved in the deception process that God has given. That we need to stop the excuses. That we need to understand that God has created this avenue for you and I to be who he wants us to be. We're going to uh, follow up again on this issue of spiritual gift. I just did an introduction because of our time. But I believe that as we go on, the, every one of us will go into that process where we're able to discover and understand fully well the issues of our spiritual gifts. So this morning, where are you? Where are you? That's the call that God Almighty is giving to us this morning. Please, let's close our eyes as we call on pastor to come and pray for us. Eternal Father, we thank you for your word that has come to us. Thank you because we have been blessed by it. We pray eternal God that our hearts will continue to itch. To want to know more of you. To want to connect deeper with you. And to want to follow you more closely. This is what the discipleship process will do for us. To the end, O oh God, that our lives will be a replica of the life of Jesus here on earth. That when men will see us, they will say, if I have not seen anything about this man, if I haven't seen anything about this woman, this one thing I know, he or she has been with Jesus. Father, O oh God, I pray that you will grant us the grace no more to sit on the fence. Grant us the grace no more to be lackadaisical about this matter. Grant us the grace, O oh God, no more to be religious about it. Grant us the grace no more to be careless about our walk with you. Father, we pray today, O oh Lord, that you will not give us rest until we have indeed begun the journey of a walk with you. As lifelong learners and followers of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray that the word of God which Jesus Christ spoke over our lives will not be a waste. Grant, O oh God, that that which we have received today, O oh Lord, will not be a waste. Having heard the word from Peter, they were the ones that were asking, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. Father, today I ask that everyone who is seated here will be asking, O oh Lord, what will you have me do? And I pray, O oh God, that they will take the right step at doing this in the name of Jesus. God, we pray that you will begin to reveal to us our spiritual gifts and abilities so that we may, together with you, O oh Lord, fulfill your purpose and be there to serve your body and to serve you in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for all our disciples. Thank you, O God, for their dedication and commitment. And thank you, O God, for their expectation and prayer to see that their disciples are turning into images of Jesus Christ. I ask, O God, that that yearning, that prayer, that desire of every disciple, O God, grant unto us in the name of Jesus. I pray, O oh God, for the general coordinator of our discipleship and education ministry, Reverend Ajibade, we ask, O oh God, that your hand will be upon him. He will not be weary, he will not be tired, he will not be discouraged. Father, O oh God, he will watch and see us come on board, one after the other, O oh Lord, until the entire church have become, has become a band of followers of Jesus. God, we pray that we will not only be followers of Jesus, that we shall also be agents of change and transformation wherever we are. But the voice of righteousness, the voice of godliness, 
will come through us, O God, in the various places where you have put us, and we shall become the light of the world indeed, bringing about a society that is saner, better, and richer in our, in our, in our lives, so that our younger generation, O God, will inherit from us a better society. Father, we thank you for answering our prayer. Continue with us in the course of this service. And I ask, O oh God, that our continuous meetings, week after week, will continue to attract new people who are ready to sit down and go through that fellowship with Jesus and with the rest of the body. Thank you, Blessed Redeemer, for answering our prayer. We'll receive your blessings today and we'll put it to use. May your name be glorified. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Let me have a better amen. amen. All right, next Sunday, by the grace of God, we shall have a little a follow up on this. We have had an introduction to this material. For it to be able to sink effectively.